Hey everybody, I'm Brandon with Fold Up Games. I hope you're having an awesome day today. We're going to be making a procedural maze or a dungeon kind of a system. It also works for islands. It's really cool. And if you want to see how it really works, go check out my game Dungeon-esque on itch.io. But in this one, we'll get it up and moving and then later on, we'll make it faster and more efficient. But for right now, this is a little bit more kind of get your feet wet. It's not beginner beginner. I've never installed Game Maker before, but it is beginner friendly. Uh, you are expected to know how to use the software. I'm not going to hold your hand through every single step, but I will show you what I'm doing and I'll explain principles as I go along. Fair enough? Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's not mess around. Let's do it. Uh, so I've gotten a couple things set up already. I've got a room. I have got a command object. I've got a builder object and a tile object and they're just got one 32 by 32 sprite in here just so I have something to look at. And I drop the builder object into the game world. What are we doing? What's that all about? Well, I think it's really, really important when you're making games to have objects that are just purpose built to do the one thing they're supposed to do. And in this case, the builder object is in here because it's going to build the maze and when it's done, it will delete itself. The other object in here, the command object, this is here so that it can control the game itself. It's the first thing you want into your room and it's very, very important that it's in here and persistent. And it does stuff like I hit escape and it can kill the game. I hit R and it restarts the room. And uh, this doesn't matter, but I told it to move the window over because I'm putting it in the wrong space and it makes it hard to record. Uh, but your command object just does things to control the, the game world. You can call it whatever you want to. Some people call it control, but everybody always does one. Just be consistent in your naming conventions. Game Maker likes you to name OBJ underscore or on your sprites, it likes to say SPR underscore. I don't like to type that much, so I do lowercase s and then N, capital N for my null. S no sh no. All right, let's get into the actual work here because that's enough setup. So before we get rocking and rolling, we're gonna want to have a couple variables. If you've ever got a problem in whatever you're coding, your answer is probably a variable. <laughs> it is the answer to everything. We love our variables. Um, what do we want? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up a completely arbitrary idea of a variable of 0, 1, 2, or 3. What am I going to do with that? I am going to decide right now that 0 is going to go to the right, 1 goes up, 2 goes left, and 3 goes down. I just need a number to start with, okay? There's nothing secret about it. There's nothing special about it. So let's just get it going with the variable. I'll come up with a good variable name. I will just call it underscore dir. Uh, call it whatever makes sense for your case. And I will do an i random. i random means integer random. Integer random is zero through whatever you just said. So mine is I random zero, one, two, or three. Great. The other value I know I'm going to want to use is how far we want it to move. I'm going to hard code this in. This is usually not the best practice. We'll make this better later on. Um, this is referred to as using a magic number. That's when you just throw in a hard coded value of something and it's not, uh, it's not flexible or responsive, but I'll put it in for right now. So we'll call it um, width equals 32. That's how far I want it to go because it's a 32 width sprite. I want it to move boom, boom, boom like this. I want it to do this. Deciding what you want it to do in advance and then trying to get it to do that and then testing, that's how you make games work. Totally, totally that's how you do it. Um, I'm going to get this to run an alarm event right now. We'll make that faster later on. But for the right now, we'll just do an alarm event and I'll set it to, I don't know, five. Uh, okay, cool. Alarm. Let's make it do something. And I like to add a description. Leave yourself notes. Um, move and make tiles. That's what this will do. I want this to move. So now we'll do something with that variable that we just set and we'll make it move to the value of width that I just coded in. So what are we going to do? We'll say, remember coding is all about the if thens, right? If then, if then, if then. If dear equals zero, I just made it up x plus equals width. I don't want to type in 32. I don't want to hard code in that number. What if I change my sprites later on? I'd have to go back and change 32 all over uh, everywhere that I wrote it, and that would be a pain. So don't do that. At the very least, put your variable at the create event and update it one time for the whole game. Let's keep going. All right, there we go. We've got our code in here. So 
x should increase, decrease, y should decrease or increase if it's 0, 1, 2, or 3. So it should be moving around. Obviously, it'll only do it the one time. We want to loop this again, right? So we'll just, we can retype it if you want to. I hate typing things over and over again, so I like to just copy and paste. So we'll make that alarm go again. Obviously, we haven't set the variable again. We need to set that variable. Direction needs to go again. Otherwise, it's going to set one time, and it'll just go off in one direction. We don't want that. So before you loop, set the variable again. Let's run it. Always when you make a change, go ahead and test it. Change something, test it. That's how you make games, man. It's not that hard. Boom. There it goes. Look at him go crazy. It's going wild out there. So exciting. Okay, well, it's doing what we wanted it to do, right? Good. I'm going to use my uh, code that I put into the command object. Escape. Boom. Very nice. Awesome sauce. So we tested and we got a response. If you didn't get the response you expected, we go back and test again. I was running a little bit fast. I could hardly see what was going on. I'll slow it down. Uh, and that's just for our, our building. I like to watch what it's doing so I can kind of see what it's thinking as it's going along. What do we want to do now? Now, as it's going along, we want it to actually lay down those tiles. Is there anything in the tile object? I made a tile object. No, there's not even any code there. It just has a sprite and that's it. So we will have it create one. We will have it say instance. I can type, you, you can't prove otherwise. Instance create, we could do at depth or at layer. Uh, layer means the instances layer. We've only got the one, so it will be the instances layer. I, I like to do stuff on depth. Do it either way, it's fine. Uh, X, Y. That's wherever my x, y is, and I'll do it at the value of zero. And the object I want to create is called, oh, help me, o tile. <laughs> o tile. Now, I want to note something here. The sprite that I'm using for this one, you'll see I made it kind of semi-transparent. That's so I can see it as, it as it moves over the other tiles. I want to see what it's doing, and uh, we want to see uh, how it behaves. So we're helping ourselves out here. So let's go ahead and take a look. There he goes. Look at him go like a little champion. I love these things. It's so weird. I could just sit here and stare at this all day. So we'll notice that it is crossing over its own path and it is stacking up tiles. So we're getting a bunch of tiles on top of each other. It might be cool to use that to like change the elevation of something so you kind of have a concept of mountains or different floors of a dungeon or whatever. Um, that would probably be a little bit too advanced for what we're doing. So in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, stop this. And what we're going to do next is we'll code that so that it doesn't, it doesn't create a tile if there's already one there. So what is it? Coding is all about that if-then statement. So we'll say if there's not already a tile there. <laughs> if not place meeting. If not place meeting, what? That's what we want. That exclamation point means not. If not place meeting, x, y, o, tile, go ahead and make one. What's that mean if it is? Well, it will ignore that. It will just carry on. It gets a, a, uh, it gets a, a false response. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so it's running the pattern. We like it, um, but it's not making tiles on top of tiles. So now it's doing what we wanted it to do. Make a change, make a test. Make a change, make a test. Over and over. That's how you code. Don't change five things and then test it because you'll never know what broke. All right, the eagle-eyed among you out there probably noticed that it's probably doing the same exact pattern over again. Yeah, well, we can fix that. You see, what a game does, a uh, game maker or any engine probably, is that when it starts the project, it has a, a random seed that it runs, and that's just a random string of numbers, and it has the same random string of numbers associated with this game. So it'll do the same random thing over and over. I know it sounds counterintuitive. Um, we don't want it to use the same random seed. We'll, we'll ask it to randomize its seed. That's so easy to do. It just says randomize. Boop! Isn't that fun? So now when we run this again, we'll get a different pattern. Watch the pattern here because I'll, I'll start it again. It looks like a number one and then it goes up, up and down. Okay, close that. I'll start it again. I'm proving to you that it works. You always want to test stuff. Make a change and test it. Make a change and test it. Yeah, look at that. It's a different random dungeon or island or maze or whatever you're making. Nice. Okay, great. So randomize is working. It's moving around wherever we want it to. Let's clean something up here. I did use a magic number in that 32. Width equals 32. I don't like to hard code in anything. We don't want to do that. Let's replace that with a responsive 
number instead. And what number do we actually want it to be? It obviously is the sprite is 32. What if we had a different size sprite? What we want to do in this case is get whatever the size of the sprite is. We can do that. It's called sprite get width. And uh, if you don't know all this stuff, you're going to be doing some Googling. <laughs> and uh, I'll say this should be fine. I think we're okay here. We might get an error with this. I think we'll get an error. Yeah, I was supposed to fill in the blanks. Sometimes you don't have to fill in the, um, it's called an argument. Sometimes you don't have to fill it in, but in this one I do. Um, I want to get, we could also get whatever is called um, the sprite index. That means whatever sprite you're using is called the sprite index. In this case, I'll just make it the null. And in the future, when I make different floor tiles and different patterns, I will expect it to, uh, I will expect it to be 32 by 32. Cool. Well, that works. That works. It didn't break. You see, I made a change and I tested it. So it just replaced that magic number, that hard-coded number, with a flexible procedural number. Let's make sure it works. I'm going to show you why we did that. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to resize the canvas now. Boom. So now, now, now what we're going to do is have a great big tile. And it's going to be... I'll give it a square on the outside. I usually keep the edges edges uh, free because they kind of match up a little bit better. You have that little line around the outside. Aha! See? See there it's moving at a 64 by 64 now because if I had hard-coded in that 32 and I wanted to change my floor tiles, I would have had to go back and redo all that, wouldn't I? I'd have to go back every single place where I use that value. I'll restart because I can with R key. I like it. This is fun. Okay, great. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for being here, and I hope you'll subscribe for the next edition of this. I hope this is useful for you. What we're going to do next time is we're going to take that alarm event, and we're going to get rid of it, and we're going to change it to a for loop, and it's going to run instantly. Instantly. Very cool. I like that. In the meantime, please make your own version of this and get your own concept of a style going while you're at it. Don't spend too much time on graphics. If you're starting a game and it's not actually up and on its feet, don't spend more than like 10 seconds on an image. Just It's called gray boxing, where you just have a, a gray or a, just some random blank object. It doesn't look very good. You want to be able to play your game and test it, and don't worry about what it looks like. Make it look good later on. So right now, focus on getting it coding and getting it working correctly. I've been Brandon, you've been you, and I'll catch up with you next time. Be awesome.